they believed more family they believed matiza family they believed zimondi family vice president of the republic of zimbabwe Honorable Colonel Tad KCD Mohadi in absentia. The National Chairman of the Ruling Party ZAN PF and Minister of Defense and War Veterans Affairs, Honorable Opa Chamu Zipange Mchinguri Kashiri. Speaker of the National Assembly Advocate Jacob Mdenda, President of the Senate Amai Mabo Chinomona, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Honorable Luke Malaba. Honorable Minister of State for Harare Metropolitan Province, Engineer Oliver Chidao, in absentia. Honorable Ministers, members of the Politburo of the ruling ZAN PF, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, senior government officials. Sorry, let me recognize the Chief Secretary to the President and Cabinet, Dr. Mishek Sbanda. Commander Defense Forces, General Philip Valerio Sbanda, Service Chiefs, War Veterans, ex detainees Restrictees, and War Collaborators. Our traditional chiefs, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends. Today marks a tragic day for our country, Zimbabwe. But unique in the sense that we are witnessing a triple heroes burial ceremony following the death of our dearly departed cadres of the second Chimurenga, namely the late retired Lieutenant General Dr. Busiso Busi Moyo, our late Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, architect Dr. Joel Bigimatiza, Late Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development and former Commissioner General of Zimbabwe Prisons and Correctional Services, Major General Retired Willis Paradzai Tonderai Nika Zimondi. Sadly, we have lost them to the, to the dreaded invisible enemy, the COVID-19 pandemic, which is wreaking havoc in the region and the world over. Hence, this ceremony is being held under strict World Health Organization WHO guidelines resulting in the limited number of mourners here today. The family representatives of these three gallant sons of the soil before us have each taken turns to chronicle the life history of each of them 
leaving us without any doubts about the enormous contributions which the trio in their individual capacities made from the period of the liberation struggle of our, for our independence and post-independence, which I will also in a moment summarize for the nation to appreciate. But before I do so, allow me on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Commander-in-Chief of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, Comrade Dr. Emerson Dambuzomunangagwa, the ruling party ZANU-PF, government and on my behalf, to express my pain and sincere condolences to each of the bereaved families, namely the Moyo family, Vana Bhumawaranda, Tine Urombo, the Matiza family, and the Zmond family, Vana Tembo Mbizi. Upon the untimely deaths, of their beloved sons. May I say to them, your great losses are our losses too. For your great sons were no longer yours alone, but ours together. Dear mourners, The COVID-19 pandemic that has ravaged the entire world has not spared the Republic of Zimbabwe. The country has witnessed in the past three or so weeks a surge in, a, in the new COVID-19 variant, which has claimed the lives of many of our citizenry, including the lives of three national heroes we are laying to rest today at this national shrine. We were here a few days ago to lay to rest fellow comrades Morton Marianga and Dr. Eren Guaradzimba. One would expect that when tragedy strikes, it would gradually abate. This has not been the case with the COVID-19 pandemic, as it is still fiercely with us, and only God knows the day that it will end. Fellow countrymen and women, this is the scourge that claimed the lives of our gallant comrades. Honorable Lieutenant General retired Dr. Busiso Busi Moyo. Honorable Dr. Architect Joel Bigimatiza and former Commissioner General, Major General Retired Willis Parazai Zmondi. The common phenomenon about these three is most importantly that they participated immensely in the liberation struggle, a war that was wage to dislodge a Rhodesian regime that had dispossessed the indigent Zimbabweans of their major birthright, the land. Secondly, the three comrades worked very hard to improve the lives of the people post-independence in a peaceful 
environment. The late Minister of Foreign Affairs and the International Trade, Lieutenant General, retired Dr. S. B. Moyo, who passed on in the morning of 20 January 2021 at Arundel Medical Center, was born on 20 November 1961 in Berengwa District, Midlands Province. At a very young or a tender age of 15 years, when he was in Form 3 at Manama Secondary School, the late minister, together with 410 boys and girls, accompanied by their teachers, left Rhodesia in the company of Zebra combat combatants and crossed in order and crossed the border into Botswana on 27 January 1977 to seek training in order to fight the oppressive colonial Rhodesian regime. They later crossed into Zambia where the late Honorable Minister received initial military training at CGT base, where the current commander of Zimbabwe Defense Forces, General Philip Valerio Spanda, was the camp commandant. At independence in 1980, he was attested into the Zimbabwe National Army where he rose through the ranks to become Major General in 2016. During his long and illustrious career in the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, the late General seized every opportunity to acquire the requisite military and academic qualifications that positioned him for higher and demanding portfolios. He was a joy to work with. When we started the journey to go back to school, he was the first part of the group that I started with together with uh, the other number of generals who are here with us. And I was, I am and I will keep on being proud of his determination to achieve whatever he wanted to achieve, you know, whatever he would have set his eyes on and what he would have determined that this is what he wants to, to achieve. He was instrumental in the transformation of the National Defense College to the National Defense University and championing food security initiatives through Operation Maguta Inala. From 2010 to 2014, the late Lieutenant General served as Director General Defense Economic Development Department a department responsible for spearheading economic development in the Defense Forces, in line with the vision of creating a strong industrial base for the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. The late General retired Dr. S. B. Moyo held several important appointments in pursuit of regional and international peace and security. These included, among others, secondment to the United Nations mission in Somalia 
as Deputy Chief of Staff from 1994 to 1995. He was also instrumental in the planning of the second regional peacekeeping exercise, Brew Crane, which was held at Rohacha Training Camp, South Africa, in 1997. History would be incomplete if the name Lieutenant General Retired S.B. Moyo is not recorded prominently in the bringing in of the new dispensation. Most of us would remember him as the mouthpiece of Operation Restore Legacy. For his distinguished service with the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, the late Lieutenant General S.B. Moyo received the prestigious medals and awards, including the Liberation Medal, Independence Medal, 10 Years Service Medal, Long and Exemplary Service Medal, Mozambique Campaign Medal, UNUSOM II United Nations Medal, Democratic Republic of Congo Campaign Medal, and the Grand Officer of the Zimbabwe Order of Merit Award. On retirement in 2017, the Distinguished General joined the Central Government where he was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. During his term in, uh, in government, the late general worked tirelessly for the success of the engagement and re-engagement programs, meant to normalize relations with the international community. In the sphere of international trade and investment, the late minister was a torchbearer in pursuing the new dispensations mantra of Zimbabwe is open for business through determined economic diplomacy. The late Lieutenant General retired Dr. S. B. Moyo will be painfully remembered as a distinguished commander, politician, and civil servant who was dedicated and committed to the emancipation and well-being of the people of Zimbabwe from all walks of life. Similarly, the late Dr. Architect Joel Bigimatiza, whose Chimurenga name was Destroyer Njovu, was both a liberator and an academician. The young Joel traded secondary education for military training to liberate his country. At a tender age in 1977, he left the country for Zambia through Botswana. Together with other like-minded revolutionary youth of the Zimbabwe African People's Revolutionary Army, Zipra. In hindsight, It was, <clears throat> it, was the, it, um, it was a wise and patriotic decision which young Joel took when he was just a Form 3 student at Murewa High School. That decision has culminated in the big story that the family and all of us are telling today. When Joel went to Zambia, 
He ended up at Freedom Camp, just outside Lusaka, which as of 1975 was now being run by Zipram. Freedom Camp is dear to us as much as Chumoyo, Nyadzonya, Tembwe, and Doroi in Mozambique because these were campsites where the revision forces committed atrocities. Against our freedom fighters and armed recruits and refugees. In 1978, the young comrade destroyer Jovu was at freedom camp when the revision bombed it, killing over 400 Zimbabweans and injuring many others, including our late national hero. The late national hero sustained injuries which he never fully recovered. In post-Zimbabwe, in post-independent Zimbabwe, the late Dr. Matiza held several demanding portfolios including being Minister of State for Mashona and East Province, Deputy Minister of National Housing and Social Amenities, Deputy Minister of Local Government, Public Works and National Housing, and Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development. As Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development, he conceived and conceptualized the modernization of road, rail, and air connectivity along the north-south corridor with Zimbabwe as the hub, which dovetailed with Vision 2030. The late national hero also made a large input in the architectural designs of the new parliament building in Mount Hamden and the Victoria Falls International Airport. As a passion proponent of economic empowerment, Comrade Matiza was instrumental in promoting the construction of infrastructural projects by local companies. A case in point is the current construction of the Bad Bridge Masingo Arare Chirundu Highway. The development not only capacitated the local companies, but also created numerous jobs and saved the country's scarce foreign currents resources. In the party, he was at the helm of Mashonar and East Province as the chairman of the ruling party ZANPF. He was championing social, economic, and political programs through the devolution agenda. His recent graduation on 15 December 2020 with a doctorate in business administration from the Binari University of Management and Entrepreneurship in Malaysia, in collaboration with the Chinoy University of Technology, was testimony of his insatiable quest for knowledge. Indeed, the nation has lost a loyal, hard, hardworking, and committed minister whose unique achievements in the construction, transport, and infrastructural development sectors will forever be aged in our minds into posterity. Dear mourners, the late general retired Willis Parazai Zimondi 
Alas, Comrade Tonderai Nyeka. Joined the liberation struggle as a cadre of the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army Zanla in 1974 and underwent military training at Mugagao in Tanzania. He was among the second group of cadres to be trained at Mugagao by the late Honorable Air Chief Marshal retired parents Shiri and of course myself I was part of uh, that training team. After completing training he was chosen as an, an instructor. However that appointment was short-lived as he was nominated to be part of the comrades who were deployed to open a new front in the Gaza province, that is the southern part of Zimbabwe today, which uh, forms um, the Midlands province and Matabere South, for joint operations with the Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army, ZIPRA, under the banner of the Zimbabwe People's Army, ZIPA. From Gaza province, the late Major General retired Zmondi was deployed to Manika province, where he was appointed Field Provincial Operational Commander. I had the privilege to work under him as his Provincial Political Commissar until we departed on, when, uh, on my promotion to Deputy Political Commissar of Zanla. Comrade Tonderai Nika, as we used to call each other, was a close friend and a fellow member of the Zanla High Command. We were close and worked as commander and political commissar. And I remember the permanent secretary for home affairs, we were together under um, the command of Comrade Tonderai Nika. Due to his diligence and military strategic acumen, he was given operational tasks that made a great impact in turning around the tide of the liberation war effort against the Rhodesian colonial establishment. Apart from commanding Manika province, he was an artillery bastion who led the Zandra forces contingent that carried out the very first attack on Rhodesia's third largest city, Amtare, now Amtare, in 1978. He was indeed a great strategist and a shrewd commander. All of the comrades that he operated with in his provincial hierarchy survived the war. Among them are um, Colonel Richard Wuchu, Elias Fravian Danga, Colonel Mapungwana, Major General retired Gibson Mashingaize, and those who have passed on are Comrade Tenson Story, Keno Makoni, Elias Temba, and the first political commissar, Comrade of Manika Province, Comrade Chunkute. 
in post independence zimbabwe in post independence zimbabwe major general retired this morning had an illustrious service in the zimbabwe national army where he served in various capacities including colonel general staff in charge of army operations commander 1 infantry brigade in Matabereland, Chief of Defense Intelligence and Commander Presidential Guards. The late Major General P. W. Um, Willis Parazai Zimondi received prestigious medals and awards for his distinguished service with the Zimbabwe Defense Forces including the Liberation Medal, Independence Medal, 10 Years Service Medal, Long and Exemplary Service Medal, Mozambique Campaign Medal, and the Grand Officer of the Zimbabwe Order of Merit. On retirement, as Major General, he was assigned to the Zimbabwe Prisons and Correctional Services in 1997 and later became its Commissioner and subsequently Commissioner General. Among other modernization strategies, he spearheaded the transformation of the Correctional Services to focus on transformation and rehabilitation of the offender. The late General Retired Zmondi was a field commander, administrator per excellence. His contributions after the Liberation War was unparalleled. He was conscious that one of the major reasons of waging the Liberation War was the skewed land ownership perpetrated by the religions. He therefore participated fully in the land reform program. In this regard, over and above his life in the services, he became an acclaimed farmer who contributed immensely to Zimbabwe's efforts to attain food security and nutrition. In Major General retired Willis Paradise Mondi, Zimbabwe has lost a great son of the soil. The entire Zimondi family, relatives and the nation should however derive solace in that the late Major General retired Zimondi worked tirelessly for his country. Fellow countrymen and women, as I conclude, I wish to once again extend the nation's sincere and deepest condolences to the Moyo, Matiza and Zimondi families. Let me also take this opportunity to underscore that the departed Garant sons of the soil did not labor in vain. Theirs was in an insatiable desire to see this country develop without leaving anyone behind. Even in death, they remain as inspirational as in their lives. They caved a special place in the ex exclusive club of immortals. They are our heroes among heroes. It is incumbent upon us all to ensure that we carry on with the odious journey towards national development and prosperity for our people. Yes, 
It is not a straw in the park. What is crucial at this stage is to share collective identity as a people with a rich diversity, paying special attention to our beliefs, affiliations, and values. The time is up for that unit of diversity to be viewed as a strength and not as a, weak, as a weakness. COVID-19 has taught us an important lesson that we are all mortals. The fight against this pandemic does not allow us does not allow for us to choose who to work with, work with, or run with. It does not discriminate between the powerful and the weak, the privileged and the deprived. The haves and the have nots. It is a ruthless juggernaut. That leaves a trail of despair and desperation. But we will eventually conquer we will eventually conquer it and prevail as a people. Government is already in the process of acquiring the necessary vaccines for this pandemic. Let us continue to observe the laid down protocols as stipulated by the World Health Organization and our national laws. I wish to reiterate the need to always mask up, sanitize, and maintain social distance. These are the key imperatives in this fight against the pandemic and have no substitute. To the departed comrades, I say, may your dear souls rest in eternal peace. Go well, garden sons of the soil. Fambai Zakanaka Magambaedu. Amban Kashe, I thank you.